Julian, JW. It's come down to France and the United States in our first ever international competition. Now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate an iconic weapon from history. Are you ready to see what it is? Uh, not ready. Well, that weapon is the Spadrone. All right, Bladesmiths, good luck. We'll see you in five days. I'm happy to be home in saint sigismo in France. Look at the nice view behind us. It's magnificent. So I start to make my tip. But I have to be really fast because more you hit your blade, less carbon you have. It's like music. It's like the music. I love to do some music with my hammer. Dam, dam, tag it up. Dam, dam, tag it up. <laughs> it just gets you some rhythm. It's just more fun. Today, I did it all. The tank, the tip, the blade. All I have left is to grind it a little bit. And it's going very well. Boom! I'm excited to get started this morning, fixing the start profile and everything. So we'll spend a bunch of time at the grinder today. With the length of this blade, I mean, it's like grinding three 10-inch Bowie knives. You've got a ton of work. Just getting everything rough ground out. We're just about ready to go to heat treat on it. Right now would be time for a little prayer. Now, the grinding process was slower than I would have liked for it to be. So this is a short amount of time left to the heat treat. I notice this curve from the top down, and it just heart sinks. I've got to do something to correct this. I know I can't fix it cold, so we got to go back in the heat treat again. I take it out of the oil, and I got the same thing. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to regroup and start over. So today, I'm going to work to be ready for the quench. And the quench is important because if the quench is not good, my blade is going to be like butter, and she's going to bend at the first shot. I think it bends. Uh, I know that there's a weak point on my blade will make the curve. So uh, I have to do the second one. <laughs> Boom. Third crunch, this one goes down. I don't want to do another one. I have to make a, another blade. I have to restart everything. I don't want to do another blade, but I've got my country behind me, so I have to show them that I respect them and give the best. Yeah. I uh, thought about a lot what happened yesterday. I've got plenty to work with, but I still got a slight curve in the spine, so what I'm going to have to do is grind that away. Going good. As I'm grinding, I can tell that this thing's going to be OK. What a huge relief that is. And now that this blade issue is fixed, I can focus on fit and finish. What's challenging about it is hitting the sizing right on it. Instead of having a round handle, we're going to have a, a, an oval handle. There's just nothing comfortable about a round handle when you're striking something on an angle. Done deal. I've got real high expectations of it. I really do. I think it's going to do well. Bladesmiths, to find out how lethal your weapons are, I will deliver some slashes and thrusts on these big carcasses. Till the end, you're up first. You ready? I think so. All right, Julian, let's talk about your sword here. It's a bit on the heavier side. Your edge easily 
lacerates into the big carcass. On a thrust, it penetrates deep. Your weapon definitely is sharp. Your sword will kill. Thank you. JW, you're next. You ready? I think so. Okay, JW, let's talk about your spadoon here. The fact that you put a fuller all the way through up here lightened your sword a lot. It is so sharp, it almost cut all the way through this carcass. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you, Doug. Now, Donald McBain, who wrote the book on this weapon, called it the shearing sword. So to test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be chopping through this rope and then attacking these sandbags as they fall. Julian, you're up. Are you ready? Oui. OK. Bye. Yes. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's freaking good. Well, Julian, that's sharp. It passed right through the ropes. It passed right through the bags. But the weight in this sword and the shape of its handle just have a tendency to be very hard to, to stop. A little thinner handle, possibly, a little more indexed, yeah. would have helped. But it's definitely a sharp sword. Thank you very much. Sir, you are next. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Definitely sharp enough to cut through the ropes. Your handle would have been nice to see it taper and swell a little bit more, but it's definitely a cutter. Thank you. Yeah, Thank nicely you. done. All right, gentlemen, next up is the strength test. Now, to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'll be thrusting with the tip and cutting into these hardwood leather-wrapped shields. JW, you ready for this? Yes, sir. Everything on the blade looks good. Guard's still tight, handle hasn't moved. Think you did a great job? Thank you, Dave. Julian, are you ready? Good luck. So, Julian, you got a, a very stout edge profile. Blade's still straight. Well done. Thank you so much. Well, gentlemen, the judges have made their decision. Our very first Forged and Fire International Champion is JW. Congratulations. You are our first Forged and Fire International Champion. Julian, we, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Jay Nielsen will explain. Julian, you brought us a beautiful piece. But compared to your competitor, your blade was a lot heavier in the front, balance-wise. And with that round handle, it made it a lot harder to control in the testing. And that's why we're going to let you go. Julian, c'est fini, mon ami. Please surrender your weapon. <laughs> OK. Thank you, guys. I'm very proud of this blade. But JW is a god. He is a god in a forge. And this guy is my friend. JW, the American, and our very first Forged and Fired International Champion. It's a title that also comes with a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Please present your weapon to the judges. I put forth a lot of hard work, time, and effort to reach this point. So it's just been an incredible honor to be asked to represent my country 
and not only that, but being able to meet guys from different parts of the world and the friendships that we developed was just a great experience and that's what it's all about.